what is the rationale for introducing a second vendor into your network? I think there's, uh, there's two uh, key drivers behind it. The, the first of which is uh, yeah, the, the market is dominated by a, a single vendor at the moment and a single vendor having 70% plus of the market really doesn't uh, stimulate um, innovation or cost effectiveness. So a lot of large users uh, are very keen to have a bit more competitiveness and innovation in their data centers. So you know, they're quite keen to talk to um, vendors that have got a credible story that can, um, you know, if you like, um, rejuvenate their, their data centers. So you know, many of them are looking at um, what would be um, the benefits in terms of, um, of, of cost reduction of, of introducing a second vendor, uh, but also in terms of, um, of, of having a, a better negotiating position with the market leader. So Andy, have you introduced a second vendor policy in your data center? Uh, well, not introduced. We've, we've had one for uh, quite a long time. We've come at the second data vendor a slightly different approach. For us, uh, the term of art we use internally is this thing called genetic diversity, uh, where we want a second vendor so that the software, the operating system is not the same across the entire data center. As, as good as all vendors are, and they're all very good, and the QA process is good, there's always that chance of a systemic failure of idiopathic origin, a polite way to say, oops, something bad happened, and we don't know why. How do I manage my environment? How do I control it? How do I recover it if my entire communications network is down flat? Well, the answer is bring the second vendor in, have a separate network for management. That gives you good diversity, but it also allows you to play the two vendors off of each other, to, uh, to Phil's point, where now you've got them in the in a data center side by side, and you can decide which one's the better one. Let them compete a little bit on the technology. Let's see who's the real innovator in this conversation. That's the, our approach. So our approach has been as much diversity as cost competitiveness also. So it really helps us in both ways. So Mike, have you any other examples of customers that you can share with us that are, have adopted a dual vendor strategy around Juniper? Uh, yeah, actually, just, well, just about everybody that we have as a customer. Because <laughs> um, you know, our approach is we, we have to earn business, right? We, we, if somebody's going to decide to use Juniper for their infrastructure, it's going to represent both personal and professional risk because they're making a decision that is different than the one they might have made for the last three, five, however many years. And so mitigating that risk is a very important part of earning that business. And so demonstrating uh, that there is interoperability using standard protocols between our products and other products. And we've done that. Uh, we've, created we've created interoperability cookbooks so that uh, somebody could say, all right, we want to use um, Juniper for the access in the refresh of our data center, because that's the first thing we're going to do. We'll refresh the core later. Well, we need to know it's going to be interoperable with what we have in the core today. And we have customers like Interstate Batteries, who's uh, uh, a customer that refreshed the access layer in their network, and they've seen a lot of improvement because they took advantage of virtual chassis technology, and that improved those east-west flows. So they got better performance with virtual machine mobility. They got better performance from their uh, Microsoft SQL cluster. Um, and, and now that, you know, that's interoperating with their existing core, but we spent our time in the process of earning their business focusing on what the business need was and mapping that to technical requirements so that we could ensure that we architected something that met their needs, not just try to sell them something so that we could retire quota and go on to the next thing. And we find that that brings a lot of value in the partnership and in the relationship, and that, that creates more of a, a long-term value proposition for our end users. Um, so that's very consistent with th what the customer engagement looks like uh, overall. And, and just to add on, in our environment, it was interesting. We've been working with Juniper for um, quite a few years, approaching a decade or more. And what has happened is the classic was we've got two vendors side by side. And now all we did was just quietly shift who's the lead vendor in this conversation to take the primary da data networks. And that's because of the competitive position, the technology, all of that comes together. Gentlemen, thank you. I think that just about concludes our discussion. So thank you for coming.